Senator, let's start with Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson. Her family is talking about maybe suing Baylor Scott and White. This, of course, is surprising news just before her funeral here. I'm curious about the reaction to how she died, this infection that she says she got from the hospital. You know, you got to think about how this plays. The fact is, Eddie Bernice Johnson, 30 years in Congress, first nurse to go to Congress, healthcare being one of her chief priorities, making certain accessible quality care provided to people across this country, and to lose her life because she didn't receive quality care is just an indictment on our healthcare system here in Dallas. How, how in the world, if everything is true, what has been said, how could you leave not only Eddie Bernice Johnson, but a patient unsupervised for an extended period of time, I think based on what is being said over an hour. It's unfathomable that this, is, I, this will not go to trial. Bella Scott and wife needs to do the right thing and make certain that this matter is resolved to the satisfaction of the family. We can never bring Eddie Bernice Johnson back, but it was ridiculous and deplorable the type of treatment she received at that rehabilitation center. You don't think it'll go to trial? You think I a settlement will happen? I, I do. Over the last week, we've heard a lot about the former congresswoman, obviously, in the news. You knew her quite well. I'm yeah. curious, you succeeded her in the state Senate. What was that like? Any, any words of advice, any words of wisdom she gave you before you uh, walked <laughs> into the chamber? <laughs> yes, she, I'll tell you. Yes, yes. You know, I, l l Let me just kind of put, put this in context. Um, I first met Eddie Bernice Johnson when I was a was a student body president at the University of Texas at Arlington, the first politician public servant I ever met. And of course, our paths continued to cross when I was in law school, things of that nature. When I came back and served in the DA's office, ran for district attorney, she was right there. Because I was in 86, and she was running for the state senate at the time. And then subsequent to that, I decided to run, obviously, for the state senate, and received her support to do that. And frankly, I was smart enough to understand that I didn't know everything, okay? So needless to say, I asked her for advice. Most of her staff stayed with me, because I figured they knew what the heck they were doing, okay? And so I used the staff, looked at some of the issues that she was champion, but didn't get a chance to take across the finish line and begin champion those issues. Higher education. Eddie Bernice Johnson was thinking about higher education before I was thinking about higher education here in Dallas. And so I ended up taking that particular concept and making it a reality, took it across the goal line. We look at issues concerning historically unutilized businesses and women-owned businesses. Eddie Bernice Johnson was champion those causes before anyone else. She didn't get a chance to take it across the finish line. I was able to work with others to get it across the finish line. I can go on and on in terms of things that um, she did, but I, uh, she was truly my mentor. She was born in, uh, she was born in Waco at a time of segregation, so she, she's watched an entire arc of time uh, pass by. She ascended to the influential position in Congress. Um, what do you think Texans should know about her that they probably don't? You knew her on a different level. I, I, I think that she was a con consensus builder. I think Democrats and Republicans respected Eddie Bernice Johnson recognized that she would do what's in the best interest of not just African Americans, but Hispanics, Anglos, the people of Texas. That's what she did. And people need to know that. We need to think about Eddie Bernice Johnson in the same vein, frankly, that we think about Lady Bird Johnson, Barbara Jordan, some of the heroes and sheroes of the state of Texas. That's the company that she needs to be thought of in, persons of that caliber, because that's the statute that she deserves. You asked me what I first remembered when I first took office. Um, she sat down with me and said, Royce, I'm gonna give you, I can't recall the name of the book, but in essence, the book was this. Understand that the people that you're getting ready to meet are gonna be your new political friends. I, I didn't know what she meant. But come to find out what she actually means, as long as you're a senator, they're your friends, okay? Uh, but she also said, I'm going to teach you how to drink the whiskey, which I don't drink, okay? Uh, eat their food and still vote against them. 
okay? And so she taught me that lesson. You, you allow people to have access, but you don't allow the, ex, the access to turn around and make a difference as relates to what you think is the best interest of the district or the state. Let me ask you this last question. What do you think her legacy is? Her legacy will be one of, uh, like I said, being thought of in the same vein as a Lady Bird Johnson or uh, other heroes and sheroes of the state of Texas. That she was a person that desired to make certain that women's rights was on the front burner. Uh, she was an advocate around this, around this country, around this world for women's rights. She was a consummate politician who stayed in contact with the community to make certain she understood what the heartbeat of the community uh, was and she acted accordingly. Senator, thank you. My pleasure.